one called Marcus. I'm the one you really want. Take me. No, Peter. We'll get around to you later. Come along. I'm afraid. I can't help it, I can't. They'll torture him. They'll torture all of us before they're through. They may, yes. I can't face it, I can't. Come, come. If I were brave like you, it would be different. But you know how it feels. Inside you, there's a pounding like your heart might burst. In the pit of your stomach, there's a knot. You want to run away, but you can't. So if all the others weren't here, you'd... You'd start to cry like a child. Oh, yes. I know how it feels to be afraid. You? But you're the bravest man I ever met. Yeah. You should know the truth. It may help you in the times we have ahead of us. I can't believe that you were ever afraid. Oh. Loud and boastful I was. Oh, how proud I was of my faith in the Master when we set out for Jerusalem for the Passover. And when we stopped at Bethany, crowds thronged through the streets to see him, especially after what they had heard about Lazarus. But among the crowd, was one man who had come from Jerusalem on a very serious mission. He had been drawn to Bethany by more than idle curiosity. A man is lucky to find anything at all to eat in Bethany today. There's never been a day like it. When I heard the news in Jerusalem early this morning, I just had to come and see for myself. It's difficult to believe, I grant you, but I was there both times. Both times? The day we placed him in his tomb, and the day he walked out. Tell me, the man who did this, um, this miracle, do you know him? I never saw him before. He's from Galilee. Uh, his disciples, do you know any of them? I've seen them, but I don't know them. Now, Lazarus, I do know him. Did you see him? No. Well, you should. For to see Lazarus is like touching the hand of the Almighty. Now, don't misunderstand. A man believes in God all his life. But how many of us are privileged to see such proof? A man whom God has reached down and raised from the dead. God has raised? People say it's the Galilean. But could anyone do such a thing? except that the Almighty did it through him. You raise an interesting question, my friend, one that could... You raise... asked about his disciples. There's one of them now. Plain-looking man, plainly clothed. They're all like that. A pretty, undistinguished-looking lot. Yes, if one is to judge by him. Thank you. When they told me who you were, I didn't believe it. What did you say? You're one of his disciples. Yes, my name is Judas. What about it? Well, it's just strange, that's all. Disciples of a man who can do such wonderful things and to go around like this. I should think he'd be able to simply snap his fingers and behold, another miracle. Food, wine, whatever you wish, just for the wishing. That should be easy enough for a man who can raise the dead. They will all see his power soon enough. Especially the Romans. Oh, so that's it. Now that begins to make sense. You feel the same way? I do. There will be no freedom in Judea until the Romans are driven out. Good to meet a friend. 
Where are you from? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He needs friends in Jerusalem. I would talk with you more. We have little to talk about. We already agree. But uh, what about the other disciples? How do they feel? The same? I don't know. They're a strange, impractical lot. Not much to build a revolution on. But he doesn't need any of them. Still, it would help if they were for it. Uh, which would you say was the best prospect? Simon Peter, I guess. You can appeal to his vanity. Oh? Yes. Give him the chance and he'll talk himself into it. He's your best bet. Where could I find this man? Oh, here in the marketplace. I'll point him out. Lazarus' sister Mary. It's all right. Good. Uh, I think it would be better, my friend, if we didn't meet here again, but in Jerusalem, as we agreed. Here, Mary, let me carry you. Uh, excuse me. I wonder if you good people could help me. I'm looking for a man called Simon Peter, a fisherman from Galilee. They said... Peter. So you're the man. I am Simon Peter from Galilee, and I was a fisherman. Now I am his disciple. Did you hear the way he said that? Such conviction, such faith. Now I am his disciple. I like that. Of course, you must understand that I'm only one of 12 disciples, and not always the brightest, as people will tell you. <laughs> and a man with a sense of humor. Well, now that we've met, we have to talk. About what? About Lazarus, of course. They said you were there. I helped roll away the stone from in front of the tomb. Tell me everything that happened. Don't leave out a single detail. Well, I... I'd like to, but we have to finish buying the food for supper. Oh, Peter. If the man is truly interested, well, I can take care of the food. Give it here. Give it here. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for taking this trouble on my account. Everyone who wishes to believe in him should have the chance. It's good to find such faith in these times. Come, let us find a quiet place to sit and talk. After we had rolled away the stone, he called out, Lazarus, come forth. The air seemed to vibrate with expectancy. There were a lot of people there who didn't believe it possible. But you did. I did indeed. I kept my eyes fixed on the opening of the tomb. In fact, I'm sure I was the first person there to detect any movement inside. And then Lazarus came out, still in his winding sheet and with the napkin over his face? Yes. After being dead four days. Remarkable. Tell me, did your master say anything? A prayer. He said, Father, I thank thee that you have heard me. I know that you hear me always. But I have said this so that the people who stand by will believe that you sent me. In other words, he was proving something to the people by raising Lazarus. As he said, so that the people would know that God had sent him. Ah, God had sent him. Tell me, does, um, does he say this often? He has always said it. Why? What difference does it make if he says it often? Well, you, you must admit it's an unusual saying, claimed to be sent by God in this way, saying that verges on blasphemy. It's blasphemy only to those who don't believe it. In the eyes of the law, to believe is blasphemy as well. And blasphemy can mean death. Who are you? It must be great danger to frighten a man as big as you. Who are you? 
I'm Samuel, the armorer. This is my shop. Oh, I didn't realize. You might say I supply assurance to the unsure. Men who don't trust themselves somehow have trust in the weapons I make. Oh. Wow. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. Tomorrow that will be bought by a Roman. And the next day it may kill one of us, this beautiful thing. You don't like the work you do? If one could make only the beautiful handles and not the blades, it would be fine work. In fact, as I have said often to my grandson... What are you doing here? My... My, my friend is from Galilee. He... Uh, he's about to make the journey back. You know how the road is infested with bandits, and he came to get a weapon to protect himself. As long as he isn't one of the bandits himself. You can take my word for it. We'll remember that. If this man gets into trouble, don't expect mercy from Caesar. Understand? Of course, sir. Took a great chance for me. With the Romans, one doesn't breathe without taking a chance. Another thing. You said I was from Galilee. You knew I came here with him. I assume so. Then you really did this for him. Here. You were escaping from danger when you came here. There will be more danger. My master believes in the way of peace. Not everyone who wants to live in peace is allowed to. Here. Me with a... with a sword, I... I don't even know how to use it. It will go like this. That better? <laughs> Peter, is that you? John! We've been looking all over for you. What's this? Well, what's wrong with this? John, he's going to need protection. And I'm going to give it to him. You said you were looking for me? Yes. We're leaving Bethany, we're on our way to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Well, I'm ready. No matter what dangers face him there, he can depend on me. Thanks, friend. So, you were on your way to Jerusalem. It must have been exciting. Oh, it was. Word of what he had done in Bethany that preceded him. And the streets were crowded with people. They sang and cheered and cried, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You must have been very proud. Ah, we were. We were. Surely after that you were never afraid. <sighs> A man and himself can be Proud and vain and boastful one day, and very frightened the next. I shut it out. Just listen to me. Listen, try. Now then, we entered the city in triumph, and we were very proud. John, Thomas, my brother Andrew and I, and, and all the rest. Perhaps we would have felt differently, though, if, if we'd known what was going on in the quarters of the high priest Caiaphas. Almost three years I've been saying we'd have to deal with this man. Well, the time is here. See for yourself. Caiaphas, whom the people cheer today, they forget tomorrow. Yes, but will Pontius Pilate forget? Father-in-law, we have to be practical about it. What if the story we heard from Bethany is a fraud? That's no defense if Pilate believes we've lost our control over the people. The man claims he's God, and people are beginning to believe it. Look at them, holding up their children to see this man, singing and cheering. What if he were to enter the temple now? Then who would be the power there, you or this man? He has no power in the temple until he can appoint high priests. As I have appointed you, that is power. What 
What is it, father-in-law? I just noticed he rides on a donkey. I thought about the same thing. The prophet Zechariah once said, the Messiah will enter Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. Of course, if a man were shrewd enough to be an imposter, he would prepare himself for the details of the prophecy. But that wouldn't make him less dangerous. So when the word came from Bethany, I thought it best to send an investigator right away. Without telling me. It had to be done quickly. And now I suppose he is back. I'm waiting to see me. All right, bring him in. Well, what did you find in Bethany? The story about raising the dead man? Yes, yes. It's true. <laughs> Nonsense. To some, it proves that he is the Messiah. But there are others who feel that with such power, he could drive the Romans out of our country. You see, what if Pilate hears such talk? Revolution. You know how it is in this city at Passover time, with the memory of the deliverance from the Egyptians, people talk of nothing but freedom. Still, if we take open steps against this Galilean now, during the holiday, there might be a protest from the people. What if we could find a way, a quiet way, a quick way. Tell him. There is one of his disciples, a man with a natural bent for conspiracy. I could bring him here. To know a man, know his ambition. What's his? Power. To drive the Romans out. A zealot. Any other ambition? Money, I think. That is enough to work with. Bring him to see me as soon as you can. One thing you must get out of your mind at once, we are no friends of the Romans here. If off times we give that impression, it is only to make it possible to have a temple for our people to worship in. I understand that, worthy Amos. So if you and your master have plans, at least let us work with you. Together, there is no doubt we could succeed. If he would do it. Here. Yeah. I thought surely after the welcome they gave him, he would, he would realize his power and use it. But there's no sign. No sign at all. Oh, he talks a great deal of a new kingdom, a new world. But I'm beginning to think he doesn't mean the same thing as we do. And you are disappointed, and rightly so. But he asked the 12 of us to celebrate the preparation of the Passover with him. Maybe, maybe that's when he will say the word. But if he doesn't? I don't know. Some men must have opportunity thrust on them. I don't understand. If he were in danger from the Romans, is there any Galilean in the city who would refuse to fight for him? Or any Judean either after the welcome they gave him? No. Well then, if he were placed in a position that seemed dangerous, the Galileans would have to fight for him. And he himself would have to lead them. No man could resist saving his own life, could he? That's a very interesting idea. But wait, how do I know you will go through with it? Here, take this as a token of my intent. It's quite heavy. Thirty pieces of silver. Just as a token. If he says anything to you about an uprising, our problem is solved. If not, you were to come back and tell me. And we will do the rest. Agreed? Agreed. Good. He will be back after the peace. Don't worry. So even before the feast, Judas agreed to betray him. 
We didn't know or even suspect. When I look back on it, I realize how little we did know that night. But you mean that Jesus knew? And because he knew, he had much to teach us at that last supper. It was when he knelt and washed our feet as a mere servant might. And after he had done it, he joined us at the table and we waited expectantly for his word. John, Thomas, all of us. Now I say to you, one of you will betray me. Oh, no, 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 I was afraid. Not betray you, Lord. Behold, the hand of him that betrays me is with me on the table. Woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. What you are going to do, do quickly. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. is the Son of Man glorified, and in Him God is glorified. Lord? Yet a little while I am with you. Where I am going, you cannot come. Lord, where are you going? You cannot follow me now. Why? I'm not afraid. I will lay down my life for you. Will you lay down your life for me? Lord, how can you doubt my loyalty? My love for you is complete and beyond question. I say to you, the cock will not crow till you have denied me three times. I... Deny you? Oh, Lord. Never! see? He kneels by himself and he prays.
never seen him like this before. He faces some terrible trouble. If only he'd tell us, we could protect him. We must wait. Any word of any report? None. Then the next move is up to us. Fortunately, we are ready. You will find a band of soldiers waiting for you in the courtyard. You have only to lead them to him. Then we bring him here and spread word of his capture throughout the city. Oh, no. Before we spread the word, we must turn him over to the Romans. After all, that is what will stir up the people. If he is a prisoner of the Romans... Of course. Now go. The soldiers are waiting for you. Get ready. We have a full night ahead of us. So you could not watch with me one hour? All of you, wake up. Wake up! I'm sorry, Master. We, we meant to stay awake and watch, but somehow... Yes. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Rise. See, my betrayer is at hand. Betrayer? Who? Where? Who? Whom do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. I have to make sure. Those are my orders. Go on. I told you that I am he. Let these men go. Seize that man! Take him up while I have been! Peter, put back your sword. For all those who take the sword will perish by the sword. to the city making a holiday pilgrimage. I, I have no place to stay. I was looking for a fire to warm myself. There's a fire in the gatehouse. You can warm yourself there. What do you want here? Why, just to warm myself by your fire, that's all. Well, come in. A man was led in here a few moments ago. He was from Galilee. I thought you might know him. A man? Who? A prophet of some kind. Do you know him? No. No, I don't know him. Why? I was just asking, that's all. Bad enough, it's a holiday. They have to have a trial, too. The way we went to capture him. That's not right on a holy day. Does he really believe he's the Messiah? He's very calm, very brave for the kind of danger he's in. Want to know something? We didn't capture him. But I thought... He 
came with us voluntarily. In fact, it seemed for a moment like he was in command. What do you think they'll do to him now? Any man who threatens the power of the high priest is in real danger. I know. Still. How did you get in here? They, uh, they told me I could warm myself at your fire. All right. But be quiet, no matter what happens. You think it'll take long? I don't know. What are they doing in there? Witnesses have been heard to testify that this man is blasphemy. But if more witnesses are needed, there is yet one more. Did you hear that? Blasphemy. The penalty for that is death. Of course. Why do you think Caiaphas called all those judges together in the middle of the night? After all... You know him? He was in the gatehouse a little while ago. What's he doing here? Oh, you think he's connected with that one in there? You're making a mistake. I don't know that man. Something about you seems familiar. Look, the worthy high priest spoke about a special witness. Can we see him? I was told to keep that door closed. Yes, but for something so special. All right, but keep quiet. You heard the other witnesses who testified you said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Did you say that? I think your silence is answer enough. But I think too that any man who claims to do such miracles is a blasphemer. And I shall prove it. The high priest seems pretty sure of himself. I adjure you by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. I ask you again, are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Are you? I am. There is no need to hear any more. The man convicts himself. Blasphemy. Leave him alone! Now I know. When we came to take him at Gethsemane, you defended him. You cried out, you drew your sword. That's how I know you. You are one of his followers. But I'm not. I tell you, I don't know that man. I never did know him. No. No! Not to have been born at all. To be born coward. It is finished. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit.
Let's get on with it so we can remove the crosses, too. Yes, sir. Captain. Yes, what is it? From Pontius Pilate himself. Are you the Judge Joseph of Arimathea referred to in here? I am. All right, then. Men, the body of that... that prophet. This man has permission to take it. My servants will tend to it, if you don't mind. Let them. It's out of my hands now. Winding cloth, a napkin to cover his face. Everything according to our custom. Now the stone. Wait, you! Out! Yes, I guess this stone will do. But I will see to it that there is no tampering with this burial. What is the meaning of this? Pontius Pilate himself gave me permission to bury him. That was before Annas and Caiaphas warned him about the prophecy. Prophecy? Yes, you should know. You were present at the trial. Oh. Destroy the temple, and in three days I will rebuild it. Exactly. Except that he was not referring to any temple, but to his own body. It was a prophecy that he would rise again after being three days dead. Well, you will not have any chance to carry away his body and say that he arose and left by himself later. There will be no miracles here and no hysteria. Caesar will forbid it. So Caesar will forbid God. You really believe that? My dear friend, it won't matter what anyone believes once we have done our job. Excuse me. Have them roll up the stone to cover the entrance completely. Yes, sir. Then, forward. No. Let everyone know that whoever tampers with this tomb defies the authority of Caesar. Every moment of the next three days, there must be guards here. You, you, stand guard here. See that they are replaced at regular intervals. They will be. Now, if he wants to come out, let him. I tell you, I'm getting tired of being made fun of. We're getting to be known as the Graveyard Patrol. Well, I heard them say at headquarters that this is the last day we'll be here. What's so important about this one, anyhow? I don't know. Yet if so many important people are so worked up about it, maybe something to it. <laughs> anyone could see. And the stone was rolled away. And his body was gone. So the women discovered when they went bringing spices to the tomb. Back they went to the upper room. And when they had told us, John and I went at once to see for ourselves. not here. What does it mean? If men have done this, it cannot be for any good purpose. 
But if God has done it, Said. He's not there. Come, we must tell the others at once. Mary? I will wait here. But it could be dangerous. Nevertheless, I will wait. If we hadn't seen for ourselves, if he hadn't appeared to us here in this very room. Not when I was here. True. Yet we saw. I say again, not till I see the nail wounds, the place where the spear struck, can I believe. Peace be with you. Oh, Lord, you heard what I said. I'm so ashamed. Thomas, place your finger here and see my hands. your hand and place it here in my side. My Lord and my God. You believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. Yes, lad, his words. Still, to have been there, to have seen it, after that one could have had no more fears. So I would have thought that he knew us better than we knew ourselves. Oh, we needed more than that. So he came to us again. Once on the shores of Galilee, he shared his meal with us. And after the meal, I could not wait. I had to speak to him. I had to. Lord, what is it you want me to do? Follow me. You ask me to follow you, and by your grace, I will. Ask me to tend your sheep, and I'll do that, as will we all. But, Lord, you, you know us well. Our faith is not perfect. Our courage, not complete. Can men like us be worthy of your trust? Fulfill your mission? Where will we find the strength that we have lacked before? Yes, Lord, tell us. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Jerusalem. If that is your command, we will go back to Jerusalem and wait for what must happen, as you've said. My brother's days have gone by, 47 to be exact, and still no sign of the Holy Spirit as we were promised. So I say, let's not wait any longer. If once I doubted, now I believe. More than the rest of you. I am ready to go forth now and tell the world what I have seen and know. Thomas, we were told to wait. For what? 
He is the Messiah, sent of God to die for us. And now he has risen. What more can there be? James, let me answer. Of course, Peter. Perhaps for some to see something is to know it. And perhaps to know it is enough. But I have reason to know what a small thing man is by himself. And I say it is not enough to know something here or even know it here. Because a man by himself can waver. He can dispute what is here. He can change what is here. A man is a different thing by day than he is by night. A hungry man is different from the same man well fed. A man at peace in his own house is not the same as a man facing an angry world. And so I, I cannot have faith in man alone, nor in myself alone. Perhaps if I'd once had faith and then lost it, I'd feel the same. Thomas, I tell you this. There is no man among you believed more strongly than I. Yet I denied him. No man wished more to be perfect. Yet no man failed worse. But don't you see, man by himself can be faithless and a coward. For Christ is our foundation. We are built on him. Once he named me Peter the Rock. But unless I am built on him, I am a rolling stone. There is no power or authority in me. But with the risen, living Lord Jesus within me, I can be all the things I want to be. So can we all. And so I say, we wait till the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Yes, we wait. And the Holy Spirit came upon you on the 50th day? The Pentecost? There was never anything like it. Like a mighty rushing of the wind that came upon us. We were in eternity and yet very much in time. We were possessed and yet more complete masters of ourselves than ever before. We were completely in his power and yet free for the first time. Christ was alive in heaven and yet now within us. It had come. Yes, it had come to us. But there were others who still did not know or believe. Still worried. Seven weeks have gone by, no sign of trouble from his followers. Perhaps we're rid of the whole thing. Are we? Father-in-law, you're unduly concerned. Are you not concerned that he chose to die? Is that all you can think about that man, what he said and did? I am afraid so. It started. It's... It started to happen. What started? What is it? What happened? His followers, they're no longer in hiding. They're coming through the city streets. They're, they're, like, they're like men inspired. And the people, when the people see them, they begin to follow them. Where? They're on their way to the gates of the temple now. You see, once they scattered at the first sign of danger, now they are back, inspired, resolute, like men on fire. I must see this. We may need help. Ask Pilate if he will send some soldiers. Yes, sir.
The Romans. Did Pilate send any men? Look around you. Good. Surely he won't dare speak now. We hadn't expected it would be easy. Men of Israel, the God of our fathers glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be released to you. You killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, men have been healed and made strong. Brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. But what God foretold through all the prophets that Christ should suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, be converted, and turn again that your sins may be blotted out. You are the sons of the prophets. This disciple has gone too far. He'll pay for every word of this with his life. Don't you think he knows that? Yet it doesn't frighten him as it did once. Something has happened to them. Don't you see they are not the same anymore? There is no salvation in anyone else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. I tell you again, God has raised him up because it was not possible for him to be held by the pangs of death. He is alive! He is alive! Facing your enemies with Roman soldiers there. And you spoke out like that. I only hope that I can be that brave when my turn comes. You can be, lad. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, I have seen it transform the lives of so many people. The weak become strong, cowards brave. If he lives within us, we have nothing to fear. Neither those dangers that threaten us from without, nor the corrosion of our own sins from within. That is the power of his resurrection. It was not just for the day in which he rose from the dead himself, nor for Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon us with such power. It is for today, for you and for me, for all time and all places, for those who come after us and believe in him as their Savior and Lord. He is alive. And because he is, though they destroy us, we too shall live. You there, uh, the one called Peter? Yes. You're next. Of course. Well, lad. Christ be with you, Peter. And I would like you to know that from now on, he lives within me too.